Good morning, everyone. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Well, we don't have Rachel on the keyboard this morning, so the good news is that St. Martin's in the Field singers have the extraordinary privilege of being able to sing alongside St. Hugh's Church. So let's, as you're able, do stand, and we're going to sing um, the Day of Resurrection. pray together. Almighty God, you bring to light things hidden in darkness and know the shadows of our hearts. Cleanse and renew us by your Spirit that we may walk in the light and glorify your name through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. Please sit as we come to our confession. Jesus Christ, our risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. where we have lived by the light of our own eyes, as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. Where we have lived for this world alone and doubted the promise of resurrection life, in your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. So may the God of love bring us back to himself, Forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together the collect for today. <coughs> Risen Christ, for whom no door is locked, no entrance barred, 
open the doors of our hearts that we may seek the good of others and walk the joyful road of sacrifice and peace to the praise of God the Father. Amen. And now Wendy will read our New Testament reading. This reading is from Acts chapter 2, verse 14, and then verses 36 to 41. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sin, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you, and for your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them, and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted this message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number on that day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And Keith will read our Gospel reading. <clears throat> reading from John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood amongst them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples, disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. 
Well, we spent the last few days with family in a village in the Yorkshire Dales. And it was wet. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> On one afternoon, I took Alfie for a wander around the village. And the rain got heavier, so I decided to shelter in the church with just the noise of the pounding river outside. And inside, it was so calm and still. And there were daffodils on every surface. I then became aware that Alfie was alert and watching something. I saw the movement. A sparrow was flying from rafter to stained glass windows and knocking at the window. It worked its way from window to window to window and then back up to the rafters and then repeated the route again and again, clearly looking for a way out. I decided to go and open the very large front door in the hope that the bird would notice the way out and also in the hope that at three degrees a local wouldn't spot the very cold air being let into their church. I sat down again to wait. And as I did so, I realised that not only was the open door letting in light and the cold, but also above the din of the river, with the door open, I could now very clearly hear the sound of birdsong. And I found myself willing the little sparrow to stop tapping the glass and listen and hear the birds outside and then find the way through the door to go and join them. And in time, the tapping and the movement ceased. Alfie slumped to the floor and I assumed that the bird had found the way to freedom again. Well, in our reading from John, we find the disciples behind doors, locked doors, trapped by fear. It's Easter morning evening. It's the day of the resurrection, the day that some of the disciples saw the empty tomb, the day that Mary Magdalene announced, I have seen the Lord and the disciples are gathered together in fear that they might be found by those who had put Jesus to death. It could happen to them too. The authorities might come after them. I imagine that they were still in a place of utter shock, confusion and disbelief as any of us who have gone through a sudden death will know. There had been so much going on in such a short space of time. And for them, it had all been so fast moving. So then to be confronted by the appearance of the risen Jesus for whom they were grieving must have completely shaken their world again. And I love that verse. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Not don't be afraid. He knew that was there. But peace be with you. He showed them his hands and sighed, his wounds. And they knew. And they were overjoyed. Jesus came. Came to where they were in their fears behind locked doors. They feared that the authorities might discover them, that they might be discovered, and they were. They feared being found, doors giving way, and somehow they were. For there is nowhere, there is no place that we can go that puts us beyond the presence of Jesus. The psalmist knew it from the other week, Psalm 139. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? 
and now the disciples discovered it too. Jesus came when they needed him most and stood among them. And he didn't single anyone out. You can imagine the disciples, particularly Simon Peter, not knowing quite where to look, where to put themselves. For they had deserted him. But Jesus wanted to be with them, to reassure them. He brought words of hope, of reassurance, to counter their fears. Peace be with you. Those words somehow go deep. They speak to our inner being. Peace be with you. And they come three times in our gospel reading. For he uses the phrase again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And breathes on them to receive the Holy Spirit. An extraordinary moment for the disciples. With the sudden death of Jesus, they probably thought that everything was over. That it was finished. And they just returned to life as it had been before they had known Jesus. But instead, he shows them far from it. His mission is continuing. And they are part of it. They are to go and they are to declare that Jesus was raised from the dead. And to declare through their words, through their lives, through their actions... And then a week later, they're in the same place. The same walls, the same closed doors, the same lock. Nothing much has changed. The disciples are shut in. The doors locked tight. They've somehow not yet grasped the reality that life is now different. They have seen the Lord, but... But little has changed. And Thomas, absent on Easter evening, is there. Thomas struggling with not only the improbable, but seemingly impossible. This Lord coming back to life. Of course, the accounts from the different disciples were difficult to believe, to take in. Everyone talking about angels, ghosts, about stolen bodies, about journeys and broken bread was hardly surprising that he had his doubts and he needed proof. And graciously, Jesus provides all the proof that he needs. See my hands. Reach out your hand. Put it in my side. See my wounds. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas needed that. Now he had seen for himself, and like Mary in the garden, had heard the voice of Jesus, a voice that he knew so well. Sight and sound. My Lord and my God, Thomas declares his faith. This is Jesus, yet he's different but he's part of God's new creation. This still took place behind locked doors. And I wonder one week after Easter, what about us? Do we have any locked doors? Locked places of our lives that we may that may be more about what's going on inside of us than around us? Are we locked in by fear, by anger, by resentment, by bitterness, by disappointment, by grief, by doubts? For Jesus still enters the locked places of our lives. He 
he still offers peace and breathes new life into us. He doesn't open the door for us, but gives us all that we need so that we can open our doors into a new way of being. Jesus offers peace. Jesus offers life. Both are resurrection reality. They don't necessarily change the circumstances of our life, of our world. But they do enable us to meet and live through those circumstances. And maybe today, maybe today, this low Sunday, one week after Easter, like the disciples, maybe we too need to hear those words of Jesus. Peace be with you. Amen. So let's affirm our faith together as we say. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth are named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Ros, could you bring the, the pebble pool forward? So let's pray. Risen Lord, you ascended to the Father, and there you intercede for us. And so as we bring these pebbles, the signs of, of our prayers, we pray that you would hear and receive them, and that, Lord, in your mercy, you would hear our prayer. Amen. Now, uh, Sybil will lead us in our prayers. <clears throat> when I say we pray to the Father, please respond, hear our prayer. We pray that our risen Lord may fill us with the joy of his glorious and life-giving resurrection and for all the churches in our deanery, that through our words and lives we may share that joy and hope with others, we pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. We pray that isolated and persecuted churches and churches in many places of conflict may find fresh strength through the good news of Easter, especially in Iran, Afghanistan, North Korea, Ukraine and Russia, Israel and Palestine, and now Sudan. We pray to the Father. Hear our Amen. prayer. We pray that God may provide for those who lack food, work or shelter, both in this country and around the world. We pray for our local food banks and the Beacon Centre and the work of Christian Aid, and other agencies working with local communities in need. We pray to the Father. Amen. Hear our prayer. We pray that God may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying, to comfort and strengthen them, remembering Catherine House, 
we pray to the Father. Hereafter. We pray that he may send the Holy Spirit upon his people so that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. We pray to the Father. Yes. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Sybil. So I publish The Bands of Marriage between Christopher Leslie James Betreen and Rosabel Catherine Lone, both of this parish, and this is for the third time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you are to declare it. Well, I know a number of you met Chris and Rosie the other week and made a few connections, so let's just pray for them. Father, we thank you for your gift of love for each one of us. Mm. And we thank you for Rosie and for Chris. And we pray for them as they prepare for their married life together. We pray for their families. We pray particularly for Rosie's Aunt Erica, that she'll be well enough to attend. And we pray your blessing on them, both on the wedding day and in their life together, as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. And they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also with you. Let's share that peace with one another. And peace too to those of you joining us from home. So we're going to sing again, and the hymn is Now the Green Grass Riseth. Or the Green Blade Riseth, sorry. <laughs>
And so in obedience to our Lord's command, we take this bread and this cup. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened wide his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. And now we give you thanks because in his victory over the grave a new age has dawned. The long reign of sin is ended. A broken world is being renewed. And humanity is once again made whole. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. In the same way, after supper, Taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. So with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join your eternal song of heaven, say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. In times of hope, in times of trouble, in times of sorrow, and in times of joy, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Eternal Father, we thank you for nourishing us with these heavenly gifts. May our communion strengthen us in faith, build us up in hope, and make us grow in love. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. God the Son, who in bursting through the grave has given a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. In the name of Christ, Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. And so we sing our final hymn, In Christ Alone.